Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, the folks at Epic Games have just released Unreal Engine 5.5, the final release, and this is now available for anyone to go ahead and download and start working with it. And this comes with updates and features across three major parts of Unreal Engine, with some subsequent updates and features going through various iterations for production readiness. And the major parts of Unreal Engine that we're getting lots of updates includes animation authoring, virtual production, and also mobile game development. Features and updates across rendering, in-camera VFX and developer iteration are currently being teased as alpha or beta tools but not yet production ready. And with that said, let's take a look at all the cool improvements and features that are now here. Unreal Engine 5.5 introduces new features and improvements designed to streamline high fidelity animation workflows directly within the editor. And this enables animators to work in context, minimizing the need to switch across various DCC apps while trying to create and build animations, making it super easy for Unreal Engine users to work directly in Unreal Engine and make the animations they want, with some cool enhancements and features coming to the sequencer, which is Unreal Engine's non linear animation editor for creating amazing sequences. And this has received substantial upgrade with a more user-friendly interface as this also comes with an improved filtering and easy access to properties and also with a key introduction of non-destructive animation layers which now provides the control and flexibility found only in dedicated DCC apps. So animators can now manage their animations how they choose and select between additive or override modes when working with animation layers. And with these animation layers, animators can also play with the weight of individual layers with ease and achieve the exact result that they are going for. Unreal Engine 5.5 also makes it super easy to create interactive dynamic cinematic scenes, enabling conditional states based on player's choices and custom binding for better object control in gameplay cinematics. So you can now simply use curves to wrap sequence timing and also set custom origins for subsequences or shots. And still speaking about animation, with animation deformers now in control rig, animators can now create effects like realistic contact deformation or cartoon style squash and stretch. And with the new animator kit plugin, which now includes pre made control rigs with deformers, animators can now work across example files to build custom deformers. And these pre made control rigs, they also come with some interesting deformers, which includes lattice, camera lattice, and also sculpt. The Mutable Character Customization is a new and yet interesting system that was announced when Unreal Engine 5.5 Preview 1 was unveiled at Seattle earlier in the year. And this allows for real-time dynamic character adjustment, which includes skeletal meshes, materials, and textures, as Mutable enables complex customizations with multiple parameters. And these parameters can cut across very intricate mesh intersections, meshes, and so on. At the end of the day, the whole idea of the mutable character customization is for optimizing memory use and also shader cost for performance. And this is a very interesting thing that I think a lot of game developers and also a lot of artists would actually hinge on and create amazing stuff. MetaHuman is also having a very interesting update. So if you work with the MetaHuman animator, this now includes audio-driven facial animation, which infers the upper face gestures directly from audio input. And what this simply means is you can now throw in an audio and use that to drive your facial performance. This is very similar with what you've got with audio to face when you work with Nvidia's Omniverse, and it is quite interesting. One cool thing with MetaHuman Animator and the update that it has now is this is fully local and works offline. And of course, this is also set to support multiple languages, batch processing and scripting, making it a very powerful tool for high quality realistic and facial animations. And in terms of the modular rig controller, alongside the skeletal editor, one of them is in beta and one of them is production ready. So the skeletal editor is now production ready, which now offers more efficient workflow for weight painting and editing. Additionally, the modular control rig now moves to beta, which now features a UI and UX improvement, quadruped and vehicle modules, and support for bipedal skeletons. And we need the rendering part of Unreal Engine, the folks at Epic Games continually to deliver performance and also fidelity, as the folks at Epic Games continue to maintain the goal of being the industry-leading real-time rendering innovation tool. And this is being seen across five major updates that are now available for rendering. Two or three of these updates are not yet for production, but for what it's worth, they are super cool. First off is Lumen. Lumen can now run at 60 heads on platforms or hardware with enhanced ray tracing for better performance and light baking. The Path Tracer is now production ready with DXR acceleration. As you know, the Path Tracer now supports high fidelity final renders complete with sky atmosphere and volumetric clouds. Substrate, which is a material authoring tool, now moves to beta. 
and this is supporting all of Unreal Engine 5 platforms and offering new ones material design for linear applications. And for those that work with the movie render graph, this has also been moved to beta as the movie render graph now supports EXR metadata, rendering all asset types and an experimental spatial temporal denoise for Path Tracer and the wonderful mega light that we saw previously when Unreal Engine 5.5 preview was announced is looking really cool with this new release as this in itself is a very very experimental feature and by what it is this is considered the nanite of lights which allows for a ton of dynamic lights to be thrown into your scene while casting shadows with all of these lights having minimal performance costs when working in Unreal Engine and this by far will definitely offer freedom for lighting artists to do the most when working with Unreal Engine. For virtual production, there's a couple of interesting upgrades that are now here. This is one part of Unreal Engine that is heavily used within the industry that a lot of people don't give credit and some of the cool updates that are now here includes SMPTE 2110 support as this now stop as this now provides stability and IP video signal improvement meeting industry standard for in-camera VFX projects. And if you actually work with tools like this, you definitely find this one super useful. Color grading panel, which was previously exclusive to ICVFX, which is the in-camera VFX, is now available for general use, as this is also something that anyone working with Unreal Engine scenes can now take advantage of, as it supports scene cameras post-process volumes and also correction regions. Also, if you're into virtual scouting, good news for you because this is now production ready as it includes VR content browsing, asset placement and customizable transform gizmos. And for those that work with cameras, there's an update to the camera calibration which has now been enhanced for better accuracy in lens and camera parameters as this supports a couple of interesting effects like lens distortion and post-process camera shakes. And still in line with virtual production, DMX and live events now have some interesting updates. So the DMX tech stack is now production ready, and this comes with some interesting improvements to control console, pixel mapping, and conflict monitoring, which includes the GDTF compliance for device interfacing. And these are amazing stuff for virtual production and also live events. And for mobile game development and developer iteration, there is a good number of enhancements to the mobile forward renderer as it adds support for debuffer decals, aerial lights, capsule shadow and more, which now improves the mobile visual fidelity. There's also updates to this pipeline state object as precaution now operates by default which now streamlines the shader loading. Developers would definitely find this release of Unreal Engine 5.5 super interesting as it optimizes data processing pipelines for faster development. So if you work with a Zen server or the Zen loader, you would definitely find this one super useful as the Zen server is now production ready and it enables cached data storage and can stream cooked data to target platform for easy testing. And for the Zen loader, this now has an optimized path for asset loading in the editor. There's also some interesting updates to Unreal Builder Accelerator and Unreal HUD CI. These and more updates are now available for Unreal Engine. And of course, for those who like to explore this, you can simply go ahead and check out all of the cool things that are now available for Unreal Engine and start building your amazing scenes with it. With all of this advancement in Unreal Engine 5.5, this now enhances the entire tool as it now empowers developers, animators, and filmmakers with cutting edge tools for creating high quality real-time visuals and dynamic interactive experiences. So this is it, Unreal Engine 5.5 is now here with some interesting features and of course, for those who like to explore this or possibly you'd like to check out Fab or maybe see how you can work with Fab alongside Unreal Engine, then links to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.